is 50 years since a total breakdown in communication between the United States and Japan led to war. Even now, after 50 years of an evolving and often close relationship between our two countries, there are still significant differences, still a failure to communicate. Tonight, the first of two special broadcasts on the U.S. and Japan. Pearl Harbor, plus 50. This is a special edition of ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Tokyo, Ted Koppel. Let it be said at the outset that we and the Japanese will probably never agree on Pearl Harbor. It is certainly in the marrow of most Americans over the age of 65 that the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor was one of the vilest acts of treachery in the history of war. Japanese of the same generation might say that this ignores the context of the times, ignores their fear of economic suffocation in 1941. Americans of a certain age still seem obsessed by Pearl Harbor. Japanese history books barely touch on the event. This is, after all, the new Japan, recast after the war by Americans in the American image. For 46 years now, Japan has been a peaceful nation, a functioning democracy with a thriving economy patterned after our own system of free enterprise. But there's the rub. The economy has thrived beyond our wildest expectations, perhaps even beyond our own economy. And there is some question as to how free foreign competitors, American businesses, for example, how free they are to compete against the Japanese here in Japan. Once again, in other words, although the climate is very different from 1941, once again, Japan and the United States are talking past one another, getting on one another's nerves. We thought this might be an opportune moment to clear the air. The Japanese have been dreading this anniversary. When we asked Hirotiro Haruyama if we could watch the ABC NHK documentary on Pearl Harbor with him and his family and a few neighbors, he agreed. Although he said if we had not asked, he might not have watched the program at all. The attack on Pearl Harbor evokes a mixture of emotions among Japanese of Dr. Haruyama's generation. They have neither spoken nor dwelt much on the event over the past 50 years. But they watched, silently, respectfully. And at times, they clearly felt the pain. And uh, there were these three sailors, and they had written on the bulkhead where they actually lived until the, the, well, 20, until the 23rd of December before they finally died. And we got, there was the last bodies that was removed off of the West Virginia. These are educated, upper-middle-class people for whom the memory of Hiroshima and Nagasaki loom far larger than the event which Franklin Roosevelt indelibly branded on American memories as a date that will live in infamy. I think Hiroshima is much more impressive for us than Pearl Harbor. I was quite, quite frightened that day. United States, in the United States, the people are thinking so, remembering so deeply, still now. Which is why we came to Japan for this anniversary, to focus on the different ways that we and the Japanese perceive events. Uh, I think Japanese people are more interested uh, than you to consider uh, the, uh, the other side, you know. We go to more trouble, say the Japanese, to learn about you than you do to learn about us. And they say, we work harder. This man told us of his son's experience, working in San Diego for a Japanese company engaged in a joint venture with an American company. The factory has both American and Southeast Asian workers. The Southeast Asians, he said, work harder. So my son said, if America continues on this track, it will become useless. 
What about the charge, I ask, that it's very difficult for American products to penetrate the Japanese market? Could anyone think, for example, of any American products that they like to buy here in Japan? There was an embarrassed silence. Then this woman said that she likes American T-shirts. I like American tobacco, said this man. I have a Westinghouse garbage disposal, this man volunteered. It's 30 years old, but it's very good. The Japanese believe that they have earned whatever economic edge they enjoy over the United States, that they study and work harder than we do. And yet our host's daughter, who is a 31-year-old housewife, struck a wistful note when she recalled a trip to the United States. I had always thought, said Akimi Shinoda, why don't Americans work harder so that they can become stronger? However, after seeing how Americans live, I thought, Americans have such a good life. If I were to be born again, I would like to be born as an American. <laughs> That sort of public yearning after a better quality of life might have been unthinkable in Japan even a few years ago. But these days, even Japanese industry is urging its employees to take vacations. Government workers are being weaned away from a six-day work week to a slightly more relaxed five-and-a-half-day week. But these are still microscopic changes in what remains a nation of workaholics. When we come back, I'll be joined here in our studios at NHK in Tokyo by three distinguished Japanese guests who will also be with us tomorrow for a national town meeting when Americans will have a chance to talk back. This evening, we'll just listen. I'll be back in a moment. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Ford Motor Company. Ford Motor Company. Profiles in quality. Teamwork. We work good as a team here on a job like this where all four of us can work together. That's what I said in 82. And today, teamwork is more important than ever. Our paint job is only as good as a primer coat. My primer coat's only as good as the body prep. My body prep starts with a quality body panel. Together, our goal is to build the highest quality cars and trucks in the world. At Ford, quality is job one. You can count on Sears for great Christmas values, like 20% off our most popular Reeboks for men, women, and kids. Reeboks for everyone. 20% off. Don't miss it. Only at Sears now. <coughs> Since a cough can be extra annoying at night, doctor it with Robitussin. That should do it. Robitussin, recommended by more doctors, pharmacists, than Dr. Mom. After 10 years in Nashville, your furniture center is closing its doors, and everything in all three showrooms must go. We've marked our entire inventory incredibly low. In fact, all the way down to what it cost us to operate, because we'd rather sell it to you than to have to move it. We're clearing our stores to the bare walls. No public liquidators will be brought in, and no prices raised. This is a true wall-to-wall -wall sellout. So hurry to your furniture center in Rivergate, Whitesbridge, and Nolensville, but hurry for the best selection, because once it's gone, it's gone. Bellevue, Home Depot announces the grand opening of its newest store with the biggest selection, the best brand names, and guaranteed low prices every day on Formby's Furniture Facelift. Formby's restores and beautifies rundown wood furniture or Elmer's glues and contact cement. For repairs around the house, count on Elmer's. At Home Depot, low prices are just the beginning. So visit the new Home Depot in Bellevue, across from Bellevue Mall. Japan, outsmarting America. Bombarding our best universities, buying scientific breakthroughs we may never see. On 2020. Friday. We are gathered at the NHK studios of their headquarters here in Tokyo, Japan, with three distinguished Japanese guests. Koji Watanabe is Japan's Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs. Kazuo Nukazawa is managing director of the Kedan Ren, which is perhaps most simply described as a sort of super chamber of commerce. 
Watako Hironaka is a member of the upper house in the Japanese parliament. She is associated with Komeito, which is an opposition party here in Japan. What these three guests have in common beyond the high office that each holds is an intimate familiarity with the United States. And let me say at the outset uh, to our American audience, Japanese do not like to be openly, publicly critical. They, they are afraid of embarrassing people, but I have asked each of you before the program, and I ask you now, Mr. Watanabe, why do you think it is that the United States has begun to lose its edge in economic competition, for example, in education? What do you see as being our biggest problem? I think in general terms, uh, there is a perception that, that Americans may not be working as hard as we do. So losing the game in competition. The Americans are not saving as much as we do, which is important for, for the competitiveness. And American education system, you have this excellent education system in higher education, but primary, secondary education may be less than what we have here. These are the elements, I think, that, that affects competitiveness. Ms. Hironaki, those are identifying the problems, perhaps, but it still doesn't deal with the why. Why do you think our educational system is slipping? Why do you think we are not working as hard as perhaps we used to? Why? Well, uh, when I first went to the United States, you had, you know, family intact and also a uh, high working work ethics, of, well, what you call Puritan work ethics. But then over the years, uh, I observed that the family ties are getting loose, and also uh, education is, um, you know, the family education and primary education, public education uh, in general, uh, not as functioning as it should be. Uh, it is alarming that 30% of uh, high school dropout exists in the United States. Again, Mr. Nukazawa, let me, let me ask you to deliver the coup de grace then. The question is still, why? What's been happening as you look at the United States from your vantage point here in Japan? What's been happening that has undermined family values, that has undermined our educational system, that has taken away, we used to consider ourselves the most competitive people in the world? Well, I would think that uh, the American society has become very permissive uh, after the Second World War. And that is one reason why you have a lot of the juvenile delinquency, drug problem, etc. But I think uh, over and all, all uh, the United States placed more emphasis on winning the war against, uh, against Russia. You won the Cold War against Russia. Uh, that was a primary goal, a primary national goal of yours. And now you are shifting attention to uh, another area, which is the economic area, and you are pu putting in more uh, gasoline at the gasoline station, probably, and you have car, the U.S. economic car, very large, very powerful, will be running at uh, full speed again. We, and I suggested to you beforehand that we talk to one another as friends, which we are. Uh, sometimes friends have to be blunt with each other. Uh, now that we no longer have the communist bloc to worry about, do you think that we are a nation without a mission? No, I, th I think the United States continues, will continue to exert the leadership. And I can see no other country can exert type, that type of leadership for a long, long time to come. But I think the notion of competitiveness is important. Without sufficient competitiveness of the U.S. economy, that leadership might not be exerted. And that is your concern and our concern, too. Are you going to be willing, is Japan going to be willing to follow U.S. leadership? In the past, for the past 45 years, there has, after all, been the threat of the communist world. Without that threat, why should Japan agree to follow U.S. leadership anymore? Uh, uh, well, that is the question that the Japanese people have to think. But uh, there are, I mean, this new world order which can be, uh, should, can be exercised, uh, not alone, perhaps, but, but just by the United States, but uh, certainly we, Japan can make a complementary role, and uh, I think this is very, very important. Mr. Nukazawa, uh, you and I have known each other for a couple of years now. I know you're, you're a tough critic when you want to be. Do you want to follow the American lead? Well, I, I think uh, the United States is ready to confer more with, with the Japanese, 
and uh, they, they will use um, the United Nations as more appropriate forum for discussion and other multilateral uh, forum, uh, including uh, OECD, GATT, IMF, etc. And uh, we will be uh, the, uh, the major supporters of uh, these organizations, uh, financially speaking, and eventually we will be uh, exerting our initiative and leadership in these multilateral forums. I think uh, the United States will be exerting more uh, uh, leadership and initiative in these uh, contexts. You were being, uh, Mr. Nukazawa, uncharacteristically diplomatic that time. And, and when we come back, I'm going to come at you again. What I asked you was, would you be willing to follow the U.S. lead? Not within the context of the U.N. or, or all these other international organizations. We, we'll come back to you in just a moment after this break. Back in a bit. count on Sears for great Christmas values, like these thick royal cord bath towels. Imagine a towel this rich and thick for just $6.88, our lowest price ever. Beautiful quality, beautiful savings, 30% off, only at Sears now. There's never been a better time to buy a mink. You just arrived, you don't know your way around town, and then you see welcome signs of civilization and sophistication. You're gonna like it here. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. You can count on Sears for great Christmas values, like our Winnie the Pooh sleepers, plush blanket sleepers, soft terry sleep and plays. You save three to four dollars, plus you get Kid Vantage frequent purchase discounts, only at Sears. Goodbye, Tide with Bleach. Here's Ultra. I've tried everything, but this gets the odor out of my laundry. Instead of a cup, one little scoop. I can't believe the scoop is so small. You see these socks? They could walk out the door by themselves. And the odor? Oof. Take dirt and odor gone down to the fiber. Gets only this white with this other detergent, but with Ultra Tide with Bleach, it's whiter without chlorine bleach. So white? Not a trace of that smell. I don't need liquid bleach anymore. Today's Tide with Bleach is Ultra. Purity Sweet Acidophilus, a delicious enriched milk that has a lot going for it and a lot going for your whole family as well. There are the Acidophilus cultures to help your digestion, important vitamins like A and D, calcium, and that great purity taste guaranteed in every delicious glass. Purity Sweet Acidophilus, all this with less than half the fat of regular milk, any way you slice it. Last night, Daddy came home real funny for a while. Then he got real mad and scared Mommy. And she was crying and she said, Please don't pretend anymore. Get some help. If you have an alcohol or a drug problem or love someone who does, call the Baptist Drug and Alcohol Recovery Center now. 329-7777. Please don't pretend anymore. Get some help. The creepiest place on earth. A bus station millions use every day that's also home to the homeless, pickpockets, drug dealers. 2020 catches them. Friday. Tomorrow, what can women do to help prevent strokes? Then Star Trek's Leonard Nimoy on his final journey through space. Plus Rita Moreno here on Good Morning America tomorrow. Mr. Nukazawa, just before the break, I accused you of being too kind, too gentle, too diplomatic. My question to you was whether Japan is still prepared to follow the United States. Are you, in other words, still prepared to be what you may have been over the past 45 years, a junior partner? Mm -hmm. If you treat us as a junior partner, certainly the resentment in, in Japan will rise. Uh, we will want to be consulted in advance when you make a global decision. And if we do not like some part of it, we will certainly offer our advice. And we will want you to, we will want you to modify uh, your ideas as a co-equal. Uh, we will want to be a co-equal to you. Because what's changed? 
Well, we, we will be uh, putting in more money, for instance, and we will be involved in more global uh, endeavors, such as uh, environment and rescuing uh, the poor countries. Uh, so we will be more involved uh, and, uh, in that uh, context uh, from, uh, and in, in along the, uh, the philosophy of the United States, which is that no taxation without uh, representation. Certainly when we chip in, we will want representation. Mr. Watanabe, there is a feeling at times that Japan tries to buy its way out of a more difficult involvement. When, for example, we asked for your help during the Operation Desert Storm, Japan was very generous in terms of mm -hmm. money, $13 billion, mm -hmm. taxes had to be raised here, mm -hmm. but unwilling to participate with its troops. Uh, is it fair for the United States, after all these years, to ask for a more direct kind of participation? I think it's, 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 in a certain sense it's fair, but, but the, the failure on our part to make the, 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 the participation in, in the military forces is a reflection of the Japanese constitutions, which is a product of the negative legacy of the, the war, which we inflicted, in which we inflicted sufferings and pain to the countries in Asia and the Pacific, including the United States. And in fact, that Gulf crisis was the first, the first experience ever for the Jap Japanese and Japan uh, to be confronted with war and peace issues how to, to involve ourselves. And out of that lesson, Mr. Shibunaka would, would agree with me that, that this peacekeeping operation bill is presented, is being currently delivered, how to enable Japan to participate, not only in financially, but in, 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 in human terms. I know you wanted to add a point, Ms. Hinnemann. Well, uh, people say that it is because of our peace constitution that we, cannot, we couldn't participate in Gulf War, you know, this multinational forces. But it seems to me that it is our commitment to peace, this pacifism almost, that uh, supported our constitution. It is very, very difficult for us, to, for you to persuade us to go into any kind of war situation. And uh, this pacifism comes from our deep felt remorse of what we did during the war. We still feel deeply and uh, you might interpret our pacifism as the reflection. Are you bothered, let's bring it back to where we began, just on, on Pearl Harbor for a moment. Are you, are you bothered, Mr. Nukazawa, by the fact that 50 years later, America is still harping on what, after all, is now almost ancient history? Well, I don't think America is harping. Uh, you know, the America considers Japan as a friend and an ally. The uh, United States will want us to uh, change the Japanese system, uh, economic system, and the social system. But uh, generally, they, they consider us as an ally and friends. We keep saying that. Mm. I mean, that, that is certainly the, the appropriate language. Mm. And yet when Japanese speak privately among themselves, or when Americans speak privately among themselves, don't you all still detect that there is a certain residue of, I don't quite know how to, how to characterize it, discomfort with one another? Do we still feel totally comfortable, or do we yet feel, have we ever felt totally comfortable with one we another? We are not able to adjust to so drastic change in one generation, or over a little bit uh, over one generation of power past 40, 50 years, the Japanese uh, growth has been just dramatic and has caught up with American uh, income level, not if, uh, not uh, the living standard, but uh, income level. And that is a gr great change. And Japan has outdone in some area uh, compared with American economy and industry. And Japanese aid is uh, the number one uh, contributor to many, many uh, underdeveloped uh, countries. So there is a sort of envy on the side of the, um, uh, the United States, or jealousy, perhaps. And on the Japanese side, they are, we feel that we have always been pressed by the United States, pressed to do this, do that, chip in, the, in for this and that. Uh, there has been a constant uh, nagging. That is how the Japanese feel the American pressure. You see, So that, that feeling is there, but that is manageable. Mr. Watanabe, is that, uh, you know, nagging is an expression a diplomat, I'm sure, would never use. But in the minute or so that we have left, 
Sum it up for me, if you will. It, it's been painful. Are things now going to change in the relationship between us? Does there now have to be more of an equal partnership where, as uh, Mr. Nukazawa puts it, there's less nagging and more consultation? I think, I think the, first of all, I have to emphasize that, I wish to emphasize that the, 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 the record of the past history of Japan-U.S. relations has been remarkable, given the fact that we had fought each other 45 years ago. And in that process, we owe a great deal to the, the generosity of the Americans to help us grow. And we have been successful to do that. And we have perhaps reached a stage that we can re-establish the relations on the basis of equal partners. I have to interrupt you on that note. We're out of time for this evening. I'm delighted to say we're going to be back again tomorrow for a longer program, and I'll be talking about that in just a moment. A word about tomorrow night's special edition of Nightline when we come back.